हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू एम सी क्यू ऑन डेरीवेटिव टूडे इज द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ डेरीवेटिव एम सी क्यू एंड ऑल ऑफ यू विल ट्राई एंड पार्टिसिपेट एंड सी हाउ मेनी आंसर्स डिट डू यू गेट राइट टूडे एम सी क्यू वुड बी वेरी सिंपल बट नेक्स्ट पार्ट विल हैव सम मोर डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन एम सी क्यूज विल बी अ पार्ट ऑफ योर करिकुलम ऑल्सो इट हेल्प्स यू टू क्लैरिफाई योर डाउट्स इट हेल्प्स यू टू चेक योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑल्सो सो लेटस बिगेन दिस अमेजिंग डेरीवेटिव एम सी क्यू टूडे क्वेश्चन नंबर वन वॉट इज डेरीवेटिव देर आर फाइव ऑप्शन इन दिस क्वेश्चन अ प्रोडक्ट विच डिराइव्स इट्स वैल्यू फ्रॉम सम अंडरलाइंग एसेट essentially traded on the exchange a contract to be performed sometime in the future at the terms decided today both a and c and all the three which option is right please reply which option is right both a and c all three or only a only b only c so keep your typing board ready and reply what is the answer anybody anybody answer please you can read the question on the screen and you can decide what is the most appropriate answer yes please reply the answer would be both a and c the answer will be both a and c because <clears throat> not all derivatives are essentially traded on the exchange forward contracts are <clears throat> not traded on the exchange so the correct answer was option d next question number 2 which of the following is or are not true about forward contracts which of these are not true about forward contracts forward contracts are tailor made contract is it true default risk does not exist in forward contract liquidity profile of this contract is high both b and c both b and c which answer is right both b and c which is not true about forward contracts yes please reply fast please reply fast option d is the right answer because uh, default risk does not exist in forward contract is a wrong statement liquidity profile is high is a wrong statement which means both b and c are not true both b and c are not true okay both b and c are not true any question now next point question number 3 for which of the following important problems of forward contracts which of the following important problems of forward contracts do futures address do futures address liquidity problem credit risk settlement problem both a and c all three answers okay question number 3 try again the liquidity problem which of the following important problems of forward contracts do futures address the liquidity problem credit risk settlement problem both a and c and all a b and c what is the answer now some students have replied e 
whether credit risk is eliminated in case of future contract that is the question liquidity problem is solved settlement problem is solved what about credit risk credit risk may be there credit risk problem is also solved because exchange acts as a guarantor exchange acts as a guarantor so your answer is right e the answer is right e okay there is some uh, internet issue and therefore there is some minor disturbance just please bear with me for this today which of the following can default which of the following can default risk also be defined as default risk can also be defined as uh this lecture i'll upload on the youtube after some time you can watch it there don't worry it will be uploaded today only okay going back is not uh, feasible right now answer question number 4 which of the following can default risk also be defined as default risk credit risk counterparty risk liquidity risk both a and b all a b and c derivatives are subject to default risk so the correct answer is d what is d both a and b credit risk or counterparty risk is also called default risk now try this one question number 5 which of the following is or are true about the future contract is or are means more than one answer is possible future contracts are standardized contract default risk is assumed by clearing house or clearing corporation price discovery in the contract is efficient both a and b all the three options are correct what is your view the student has replied e let us see e is the right answer all three options were correct everybody should participate question number 6 what does long future position mean what does long future position mean long future position means a right but not the obligation to purchase the underlying asset a right as well as an obligation to purchase the underlying asset it is the same as buying a forward contract it is same as selling an option choose the correct answer please long future position means buy as buying and it is a right as well as an obligation to purchase correct answer was b you are right very good the correct answer was b then question number 7 which of the following is true if the price of the underlying asset rises sharply after the initiation of a future contract option a the value of the long position in future contract becomes positive the value of the long position in future contract becomes negative the value of a short position in future contract becomes positive value of short position in future contract becomes negative and both a and d both a and d which option is right if the price of the underlying asset rises long position will become positive <clears throat> and short position will become negative so the correct answer is e the correct answer is e correct answer is e just check it again correct answer is e is it right <clears throat> correct answer is e long will become positive short will become negative you are right the e was the right answer now we'll try eight number bsc sensitive index which is called sensex 
is a portfolio option a consisting of 30 scripts equally weighted b 30 scripts weighted by their free float market capitalization 30 scripts weighted by the number of outstanding share of this company and d consisting of 100 scripts weighted by their market capitalization so many students have replied option b <clears throat> let us check <clears throat> b is the right answer b is the right answer bsc sensex is a 30 script weighted by free float market capitalization free float market capitalization means the market value of shares available with the public market value of the shares available with the public any query on this question number eight now read question number nine read question number nine which of the following is false which of the following is false bsc sensitive index is managed by bsc nsc consists of 30 script nifty consists of 30 scripts weighted by their free float weighted by their free float market capitalization weighted by their free float market capitalization market risk is also called systematic risk option on index is an example of index derivative which of the following is wrong out of four options three options are right one is wrong which option is wrong you are right option b is wrong option b nifty consists of 50 scripts not 30 scripts option b is wrong very good answer okay so when you will write the answer you write question number also 10 12 because sometime i receive your response maybe one or two minutes less late and then i am not able to understand whether you are answering for ninth or eighth question number 10 bsc sensitive index is used to indicate the market movement provide the benchmark for funds performance provide index based derivative product all of the above what is the answer what is the answer please reply 10 d 10 d everybody 10 d so let me ask computer computer please reply 10 d is the right answer bsc sensex is used for market movement for understanding fund performance and also derivative products are created bsc sensex future is there so that is useful all three would be the correct answer very good response by the students question number 11 the base year for bsc sensitive index is a 1985 86 b 1978 79 1982 83 or 1991 92 for question number 11 some general knowledge is required okay some general knowledge will be useful anybody who got the answer for question number 11 this may not be easy for you because it is based on general knowledge option b was the right answer bsc sensex sensitivity index base year is 1978-79 from that time we have been using bsc sensex okay now we'll go to question number 12 this is from portfolio chapter actually market risk reflects the risk arising due to market risk reflect the risk arising due to company specific factor industry specific factor economic specific factor or none of the above 
answer little first market ref risk reflects the risk arising due to this we have done in portfolio chapter it is not country specific company specific it is not industry specific they are called diversifiable risk it is due to economic specific factor correct answer was option c is the right answer market risk is economic specific risk try question number 13 at the expiry of the future contract theoretically cash market should be higher than future market cash market should be lower than future market cash market should be at the same level as the future market cash and future prices should converge both c and d please suggest me the correct answer please suggest me the correct answer question number 13 what do you think on the expiry of the future contract what can happen on the expiry of the future contract cash market and future market they converge they come to the same level which can be interpreted as cash and future should converge cash and future should be same level therefore the last option both c and d is correct so the correct an answer is both c and d both c and d both c and d answer for question number 13 was the last option e now we'll come to question number 14 question number 14 which of the following is true with regard to future contracts which of the following is true with regard to future contract option a future provide flexibility of designing the contract according to one's requirement is this true or false it is false future contracts are standardized contract the long and short are dependent on each other for the fulfillment of the contract that i don't know you have to think an answer future contract can be squared off at any time during the life of the contract so this seems to be correct we are on question number 14 once a position is taken the trader is required to carry the position till maturity is it true is it necessary to carry the position till maturity and the long and short are dependent on each other this also is wrong the last says none of the above none of the above cannot be right so what is your answer do you think you have an answer 14c 14c yes you can square off at any time in future contract the long can be one party short can be any party they are not dependent on each other forward contract they are dependent on each other forward so answer 14c is right very good those who have given answer 14c very very good now we'll come to question 15 who are the players in the future market speculator hedger arbitrager only a and b a b and c so the answer given by the student is 15 e a b and c speculator hedger arbitragers all are the players in future market divya is right <clears throat> answer e was right question number 16 which of the following is false with regard to speculators in the future market option a 
you have to find the false statement option a presence of speculator is essential in the system they contribute towards higher liquidity in the market they contribute towards bringing down the cost of transaction in the system they contribute towards better price discovery in the market none of the above which of the following is false with regard to speculator please reply those who are going to learn later will also try themselves those who are going to learn on youtube you also first think and then you can see the answer so one student has replied c another c so most of the voting goes for c let me check c oi c is not right none of the above all the statements are correct more people participating means the cost of transaction in the system will get reduced this is also right speculators are essential they bring liquidity they reduce the cost and they help in better price discovery so you will put the answer as <clears throat> e tick mark e tick mark e even the because the volume goes up because of speculator because of speculators the volume has gone up like anything and that has reduced your cost why do you think so many uh, portals or apps are allowing you to do free trading free this free that and that is because of the volume question number 17 question number 17 a portfolio consists of three scripts with weightage 0.25 0.5 respectively <clears throat> the beta of the individual scripts are 2 1.2 respectively what is the beta of the portfolio what is the beta of the portfolio please reply <clears throat> what is the beta of the portfolio you have to compute weighted average weighted average beta multiply weight into beta and give me the answer almost every student is saying option c very good 1.30 is the right answer 0.25 into 2 plus 0.50 into 1.20 plus 0.25 into 0.8 and when you will solve it you will get 1.30 1.30 is the right answer option c tick mark question number 18 this question number 18 is a continuation of this question only whose portfolio beta is 1.30 so keeping that in mind you will answer 18 the portfolio in the above question will be called aggressive conservative index portfolio none of the above the portfolio in the above question will be called aggressive conservative index none of the above what is the answer please anybody answer answer 18 some student are saying b is if the beta is more than 1 what do you call it if beta is greater than 1 what do you call it if beta is greater than 1 you will call it as aggressive you will call it as aggressive if beta is less than 1 we call it a uh, conservative so the correct answer for question number 18 is it is an aggressive portfolio because beta is more than 1 question number 19 this time you have to try yourself try yourself the beta of a equally weighted portfolio is 2 there are five scripts in the portfolio 
the beta value of four scripts are 1.3, 2.10, 1.8 and 2.5 respectively. Therefore, what is the beta of the fifth script? What is the beta of the fifth script? What is the beta of the fifth script? Please try yourself. This can come as a four mark question in your main paper also. Anybody who wants to reply? Students have replied now, they are saying it is option C 2.5. Okay, let me say you have to solve this equation. Portfolio beta is 2 and there are 5 scripts in the portfolio with equal weightage. If the weightage is equal, we can take average 1.3 plus 2.10 plus 1.8 plus 2.5 and let us say it is x and this you divide by 5. When you will solve it, you will get the value of x as 2.5. Is it right? Have you got it like this? Have you got it like this 2.5? Yes. So, the answer is 2.5. Let me check. Okay, wait, wait. Answer is 2.3. Bring your calculator first. 1.3 plus 2.10 plus 1.8 plus 2.5 that is 7.7 .7. minus 10, 10 minus 7.7 .7 is 2.3 so the correct answer was 2.3 you were you were right 2.3 was right <clears throat> 2.3 was right mathematically 2.3 2.3 you have got it try this question also try this question also the beta of a portfolio Visa vis BSC Sensex is 4, beta is 4 with respect to Sensex. One month future contract on BSC Sensex is trading at 10,000. One month future contract is 10,000. Find the value of the portfolio. If the hedge is to be perfect one, find the value of the portfolio if the hedge is to be perfect one. Assume that the holder of the portfolio enters into two contracts in the index future and the contract multiplier for the BSC Sensex future contract is 50. Please try yourself. Beta of a portfolio is 4. What is the value of the portfolio? Student has given answer as 20 C. Portfolio beta is 4 and it is a perfect hedge. So, for perfect hedge what we do? We multiply beta into portfolio value and that is the value of index future required. Beta is 4, portfolio value is missing, index future will be 10,000 into 50 and he has purchased two contracts. He has purchased two contracts. So, 4x will be equal to 10 lakhs. x will be equal to 2,50,000. x will be equal to 2,50,000. Is there any option like that? 2,50,000? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. You will get 2,50,000. 
So those who replied 2,50,000, your answer is right. Let me see. Yes, 2,50,000 is right. Question 21. A trader has rupees 30,000 with which he buys the script with beta value of 1.2. Another option open to him is to buy one nifty future contract at a level of 2,900 using the same as you uh, at a level of 2,900 using the same rupees 30,000 as margin. If the market goes up by 10 percent, if the market goes up by 10 percent, what is the difference between the profit he will make in the cash and future market? Assuming that future index has beta 1 vis-a-vis -vis the cash index and the contract multiplier for the nifty future contract is 100. Question can be asked for 4 or 5 marks in the exam also without options. I will request our learned students to try this question. What is the difference between the profit he will make in cash market and future market? If he buys shares of 30,000 or instead of that he buys one nifty future contract at a level of 2900. Anybody want to answer? If you invest in share market, your profit will be 30,000 into 10 into 1.2, 12 percent. So that is I think 3,600. If you invest in index 2900 into lot size is 100 into 10 percent appreciation. So that will come to 29,000. Difference difference will be difference between 29,000 and 3,600 is 25,400 is 25,400. Do you have any answer like this 25,400? Twenty five four hundred. Option C tick mark. Option C tick mark twenty five four hundred and this is the calculation for that. Next is question number twenty two. The beta of supply is one point five vis a vis nifty. A trader has a long position in Sipla with worth rupees six lakh, coupled with a short nifty position of 6 lakh coupled with a short nifty position of 6 lakh which of the following is true which of the following is true he has a partial hedge against market risk in sipla he has a complete hedge against the market risk in sipla he is over hedged please reply 22 sipla beta 1.5 Sipla long position 6 lakh, short position nifty 6 lakh. Is he partially hedged, fully hedged, over hedged? Is he partially hedged, fully hedged, over hedged? 6 lakh rupees is the long position multiplied by beta. In order to fully hedge, he should take a short position of 9 lakh, but he has taken a short position of only 6 lakh. He is partially hedged. He is not fully hedged. He has to buy or short index, index future of 9 lakh. So tick mark answer A. Tick mark answer A. Now 23 number. An investor expects that the rupee will depreciate. And hence the profit of export oriented information technology company will go up. He is long on Infosys to the extent of 20 lakh. The beta of Infosys is 1.35 with Nifty. He wants to remove the effect of market movement from his holding. He want to remove the effect of market movement from his holding. So 20 lakh is the long position on 
uh, Infosys and beta is 1.35, what he should do? Option A, short nifty future worth 27 lakh, short nifty position worth rupees 13.5 lakh, short nifty future worth 20 lakh and take a long position in nifty future worth rupees 27 lakh. What he should do? If he is long on the stock, he should go short on the future. So, there are three options with short and the amount of nifty future to be shorted will be value of spot position into beta. Answer is 27 lakh. Tick mark option A, you are right. Option A is right. Question number 24. Mr. X buys 23A is right. Very good. Mr. X buys 10, 1000 share of HLL at 250 each and obtains a complete hedge by shorting one nifty future contract at 3000. The contract multiplier is 100. Now it says both his positions are closed up on the next day. HLL has gone down by 2% and nifty has gone up by 1%, what is his overall profit or loss? This question we have done in the class also in the derivative future chapter. So you have loss on HUL or HLL stock 1000 into 250 into 2%. Anybody who can give me the answer? What is the answer here? 2% on this amount, 1000 into 250 into 2 percent. So, 5000 loss and what about this? Nifty has gone up, loss on Nifty also, loss on Nifty, we have taken a short position, but Nifty has gone up 3000 into 100 into 1 percent, 3000 rupees loss. So, which is the right answer? Which option would you tick mark? Option A or option B? Option A or option B? Option B you will tick mark total loss, total loss 8000 tick mark, total loss 8000 tick mark, total loss 8000 tick mark. This is the calculation for that. 24B is right. Okay, now come to question 25. On July 1, 2026, an investor has portfolio worth rupees 20 lakh, which has a beta of 0.5, visa vis the nifty. There is a marriage in the family, 25, 20 lakh into beta 0.5. There is a marriage in the family, wow. At the end of September 26, so he wants to totally eliminate the market risk. What is the correct hedging strategy? What is the correct hedging strategy? One is buy future worth rupees 20 lakh, short future worth rupees 10 lakh, short future worth rupees 20 lakh and do nothing do nothing and keep the portfolio intact to sell when the money is needed. What is the answer? 25B. Okay. So, we can just change the question slightly short index future because then only I need to multiply by 0 0.5. So, the answer is B, 10 lakh, 20 lakh into 0 0.5. Question 26. Very important risk faced by derivative trader on an exchange are risk faced by derivative trader on exchange are operational risk, credit risk, market risk, both A and C, both B and C. Please reply fast. Think about it. Your exam is near. I am trying my best to bring good questions. Anybody answer 26C, one student is saying 26C, operational risk is there. You can punch a wrong data, 
one case study we have discussed in our syllabus due to wrong punching instead of long you have punched short by the staff by the staff and you suffered a loss credit risk is not there because exchange is a guarantee mechanism market risk is there share market can move in any direction so option a and c option a and c let me see what is the institute or the answer d option d is the right answer operational risk is there you may put wrong data wrong punching so somewhere you have to put some information you have to decide the stock decide buy sell decide quantity decide lot size and that can be an operational uh, risk there can be internet failure like it is happening today that is my operational risk i am taking important discussion and suddenly there is an internet failure so that is operational risk operational risk and market risk is there question 27 short hedge through future means short hedge through future means short hedge through future means hedging short position of cash market by long future position hedging long position of cash market by short future position hedging long position in cash market by long future position hedging short position by short future position so the answer is most of the student have replied b hedging long position in the cash market by short future position you are right when long position in cash market is hedged by short future position we call it short hedge through future tick mark option b 28 number hedging a long position in jet fuel this we have discussed in commodity derivative chapter long position in jet fuel by a short position in crude oil by a short position in crude oil long position in jet fuel by a short position in crude fuel is called 28 option c cross hedge two different commodities are used option c 29 what should be the value of 6 month forward contract of a share if it is quoting in the cash market at rupees 100 the share is expected to declare a dividend of rupees 4 3 months from now assume the interest rate in the economy is 10% assume the interest rate in the economy is 10% don't use continuous compounding use simple compounding and reply use simple compounding and reply and give me a general answer not very hardcore mathematician answer 100 rupees the cash market price interest for 6 months will be 5 rupees minus dividend 4 rupees so the answer is 101 approximately we don't want accurate answer we don't want accurate answer so the answer is approximately 101 do we have 101 yes is right one more question for today question number 30 30 the current value of an index is 4167 4167 interest rate in the economy for 3 month borrowing is 12% dividend yield on the index is 3% so 12 minus 3 net 9% the value of the future contract which has 3 months to expiry should be so you will take 4167 plus 9% of 4167 into 3 by 12 please try we are using simple way of interest calculation not continuous compounding
what is the answer one student is saying a okay a is right option a is right if you solve this you will get 4260.75 am i right so this itself can be a four mark question without options in the exam okay so this completes our mcq for today thank you very much for joining for this mcq and please keep joining you will get more mcqs thank you very much